Hello, my name is John Trahune, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect here at AWS. We're here today to talk about the sustainability pillar for the well-architected framework DynamoDB Lens. We have a number of topics and questions to go through in order to better understand the areas where we can improve the sustainability of our applications. The sustainability pillar is really about understanding and reducing the impact of the services we use. We want to quantify this and be able to monitor for energy consumption and efficiency in our applications. If you've been operating in AWS for some time, you've likely heard of the shared responsibility model. But if you haven't, the shared responsibility model describes the different responsibilities of AWS and our customers as we work together. Sustainability requires everyone's participation and follows that model of shared responsibility. AWS is responsible for sustainability of the cloud and customers are responsible for sustainability in the cloud. That means that AWS is continuing to work towards lowering the carbon impact of operating the infrastructure, such as data centers, servers, cooling, that powers the cloud. Amazon is on path to powering its operations with 100% renewable energy by 2025, and is committed to being water positive by 2030. Our customers build their applications on top of that global infrastructure and are responsible for the sustainable design and operation of those applications. Tools such as Well-Architected help our customers improve sustainability in the cloud by leveraging efficient software application designs, improving utilization, and reducing waste. For this video, we're focusing on sustainability with regards to Amazon DynamoDB. For this service, there are a number of considerations. The first is to understand if DynamoDB is the best database engine for your workload. We want access patterns to be well known. Uh, if access patterns are ad hoc or more analytics focused, they may not be the best fit for DynamoDB. Those sorts of access patterns can mean lots of scanning, which is quite compute intensive. For DynamoDB and NoSQL in general, it's better if we have more well-known access patterns that are OLTP or transactional in nature. We also want to be sustainable by cleaning up unused resources and evaluating where SLAs can be relaxed. For certain workloads, we can be happy just using a single region, for other workloads, global tables may be needed. If we're using AWS Lambda to read from DynamoDB streams, which is a fairly common design pattern, we can now utilize Lambda event filtering to only invoke Lambda functions when we have a pattern match on the payload. Fewer invocations of Lambda means less compute used, which means better efficiency. We want to monitor consumed capacity units and provision capacity units for both reads and writes in our application. And we can use these as proxy metrics to understand the carbon efficiency of our application. The lower we can drive our consumed capacity, the lower our carbon impact. We also want to optimize writing and accessing data to be as efficient as possible. Writing more data than necessary or reading data inefficiently uses additional resources. Try to keep your traffic patterns as smooth as possible. Spiky workloads can be harder to provision for, which means additional resources used. It may also be a good idea to run your batch jobs during off-peak hours, where less of the grid's power is being sourced from less efficient peak power plants. Let's dive into the area of design efficiency and how best to query data in DynamoDB. With DynamoDB, we always want to read data as efficiently as possible. This has benefits for cost, speed, and for sustainability. A key design goal for DynamoDB is to minimize the need for complex compute at runtime. Instead, we store data in a shape that's easily retrieved without the need for complex aggregation operations. If we only need to read one item, such as a key value lookup, then the getItem API operation makes the most sense. This will read a maximum of one item, so the impact for CPU and disk I.O. behind the scenes is low. If we need to read multiple items, though, then we have a choice. We can either use query, scan, or batch get item. It's nearly always preferable to use query instead of scan because it's a lot more targeted. Queries read off of a single partition, which is efficient because it avoids reading data that's unnecessary to satisfy your request. A scan reads all of the, the data on your table. Now, in some cases, this is necessary where it makes sense to read data for your entire table. Um, but in most cases, it's a better idea to use a query that's a lot more targeted and more efficient. When using a query operation, we also have some different options for filtering data. This can be done with a key condition expression or a filter expression. Key conditions allow filtering on the sort key, and this is efficient because not all the data needs to be read. It works like a B-tree index, taking advantage of the ordered data set. 
For a filtered expression, though, this operates on the non-key attributes, and we have to read the data from disk before we apply that filter. And once we've read the data from disk, we've used additional resources. So using a key condition expression is always going to be more efficient in terms of sustainability than using a filter expression. We need to have efficient filtering for different access patterns, and that can mean creating a global secondary index to efficiently read from a different copy of our data. This index can have a different partition key and sort key so that we can use key condition expressions to facilitate a new access pattern. In order to keep data stored to a minimum, it's recommended to only project the data that we need for that specific access pattern. We can also have sparse GSIs where only some of the items are replicated into the index. Idle resources are an easy target for sustainability improvements. We can utilize CloudWatch metrics to see if we have any underutilized or unused resources such as tables or indexes. If there are any resources which are effectively idle, these may be good candidates for deletion, or if there are resources that are very infrequently used, they may be good candidates for alternate design patterns. Design to meet your SLAs, not necessarily to exceed them. With DynamoDB, we have single region tables that already have four nines of availability as an SLA. This may be enough for many workloads. Some workloads, though, may need global tables for multi-region replication or to increase the SLA to five nines, but that also means storing an additional copy of data and having to replicate writes. So make an evaluation for the different portions of your application, where you need the additional availability or multi-region versus where you may be able to decrease the carbon impact by sticking with a single region. Next, we have a number of questions here that we can run through to help determine how best to optimize your application for sustainability in DynamoDB. The first is high level. Is DynamoDB the right tool? We've talked about evaluating if DynamoDB is the right database for your workload, and this is a great starting point. At AWS, we want you to pick the right database for the right job. Second, can you utilize other serverless services? DynamoDB is serverless, which is great for having low operational overhead. It means that the AWS service team can take responsibility for making sure that we use the right machine instances uh, and improve operational efficiency. This leads to overall sustainability gains. In this question, we ask if we can leverage other serverless services that integrate well with DynamoDB. For example, can we use AWS Lambda to read changes from DynamoDB streams? Next, can you utilize Lambda event filtering when using Lambda. When you're using Lambda, using event filtering reduces invocations, which reduces compute and improves sustainability. Next is, how do you monitor your DynamoDB usage? When monitoring DynamoDB, we can leverage CloudWatch and view relevant statistics such as consume capacity or provision capacity for reads and writes. These metrics can be viewed in the AWS console or by integrating with third-party services. Next, how do you evaluate the efficiency of your data model? We talked about a lot of design decisions to improve efficiency. And this question is about how you evaluate the efficiency of your application once you've implemented it. One way to do that is inspecting the return consume capacity metric that can optionally be returned when you make API calls. Next is how you detect and decommission unused resources. Leverage CloudWatch to identify resources that are no longer being used and could be deleted to improve your sustainability footprint. How do you archive data to colder storage? Using TTL to expire data is an efficient way to delete data. It doesn't consume write capacity units on your table and is a more efficient way to delete data than doing explicit deletes. We can pick up this expired data on stream and move it to S3 and maintain a copy in colder storage. How can you group data together in the same table that has a similar limited life? It can be beneficial to group data together with a similar lifespan um, because while deleting items through TTL is an excellent way to optimize for cost, it still does consume compute resources, even if you're not billed for them. Instead, if we can delete the whole table, it's not going to consume write capacity units, and it's not going to consume the same amount of resources in the back end. This is something to be conscious of during the planning stages of your application, and is potentially a way to, to further reduce um, the carbon footprint for applications that have a limited life cycle of data. These questions are designed to highlight specific areas that could be improved in your application. We hope they're helpful in meeting your sustainability goals. 
Please look out for other videos in this series on best practices for DynamoDB well-architected lens.